Hey guys, what's up? I've got a pretty cool video for you today. As you may know, on Monday, August 21st, 2017, we're going to have a total solar eclipse. The path of this eclipse follows from the Pacific Northwest all the way through to where I am, guys, in South Carolina. And I happen to be right in the path of totality, guys. Look at this. I'm in Irmo, so it's just a little bit south of me, but I'll be able to see it like right outside of my window. But I plan on going to Lake Murray, so I have a nice, interesting foreground. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about the basic exposure settings for what I'm going to do. You can use this as a guideline. Uh, feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, just as a disclaimer, I've never shot an eclipse before. This video is the information that I have gleaned from reading online about this. So please, I encourage you to go out and do research on your own. This is what my game plan is. I've got about a month to prepare, but I think I have all I need to do it. All right, guys, so basic equipment first. I have the Panasonic LX100 and the Panasonic J85. I'm going to be using the LX100 to record a 4K video at full wide angle of my surroundings. Um, like I said, I plan on being on the dam, so there should be plenty of people there. I might have to camp out the night before. So I want to get a nice wide angle shot of the action, the eclipse as it happens. Now, a few things to keep in mind. For the video, I'm going to have manual exposure, so I'll have it exposing for daylight. When the eclipse happens, it'll get very dark. The exposure will not automatically gain up. I don't want it to. I want it to show the dramatic darkness. And secondly, the maximum 4K video exposure time on the LX100 is 15 minutes, so I want to make sure to start it maybe around 2.30 or so, right before totality, so I catch that whole um, dramatic darkening phase of the eclipse. So the LX100 will be going as I'm taking still shots on the G85. Now I'm only going to be using one lens with the G85. That's the Panasonic 100 to 300 millimeter f4 to 5.6 version 2. Uh, basically for this guys, use the longest lens you've got because what I am going to be doing during this eclipse, what I'm focusing on is totality. Now there are partial phases of the eclipse you can take pictures of where you see just the, the moon coming in, taking a bigger and bigger chunk out of the sun. Now, the problem with that is you have to have a very, very dark neutral density filter, usually one that's specifically sold for eclipses. Now, this is something like a 16 or 17 stop ND filter. It's something that's really too dark to use for anything but eclipses. And for the filter size of my 100 to 300 lens, it's a 67 millimeter filter size. We're talking about 100 bucks. So 100 bucks for something I'll use one time. And I don't know, guys, the partial phases don't really excite me that much. What I'm interested in from a scientific nerdy perspective is totality. Now that's when the moon is completely obscuring the sun and you see all these little solar prominences around the edge. You see flares coming out and you get these coronal bands and these waves coming out. It's just an amazing show. You can look online for more examples of this, but totality for me is very interesting. Now something to keep in mind for totality is you're going to have a very wide range of exposure um, detail that you need to capture. So first step is make sure you're bracketing your shot. Now I'm going to take as wide of a bracket as my camera will allow, which I think is plus or minus three EV. So I'll be shooting three shots at a time. I might kind of play around to find the right value, but yeah, I want to make sure I get as wide of a dynamic range as possible because that will let you get the detail for the darker shots, the detail right around the edge, the, you know, the colorful flares. And then for the longer shots, the longer exposure shots, you can get some more of the uh, distant phenomenon coming off of the sun. So you'll end up with a composite image when you process it later on. Now you're probably asking what I did going into this. What about my exposure? What should I expect? Okay, the first rule is you will not have any kind of filter on your lens for totality. You will take off your solar eclipse filter. If you're doing the partial phases, totality, take it off. So I'm not going to have that filter anyway, so it won't matter to me. But take a look at this table, guys. I found this online. Um, the copyright is below. This is a good guideline for getting started. I'm focusing on where it says totality. So it looks like for what I'm going to be doing, ISO 200 have the cleanest detail possible. Um, maybe F5.6, maybe F8. Um, I'm looking at probably as slow as a quarter of a second or maybe an eighth of a second and as high as maybe one two thousandth of a second. So you can see it's a pretty huge range of exposures, but that just kind of goes to show how much information 
is possible in a photo of a total eclipse like this. So this table can be your guideline. It can kind of be your jumping off point as to what to expect. Just as a general rule, I would suggest using the lowest ISO possible. Absolutely, of course, shoot raw because you want to be able to pull the most detail out of the shadows as you can. With JPEGs, that's very hard to do. If you're using a phone, forget about it. Don't waste your time, just watch the eclipse. The whole stage of totality start to finish is something like two and a half minutes, two minutes, 20 seconds. The point, the greatest point of totality based on this map is actually in the southern part of Illinois, uh, where I am in Columbia, South Carolina. It's still about two and a half minutes, so I should have enough time to do what I want to do. Now, just a quick word on tripods, guys. Anytime you're pointing your camera up at the sun, it's probably not going to be good for you or the camera. If you have a DSLR, you don't want to be looking at it through the viewfinder at the sun. If you have a mirrorless camera, guys, that sun's just going to be burning up your sensor. So maybe, you know, quickly get in position and then cover it with something. Put the lens cap on, put a, a towel over your camera. I'm going to be shooting mine uh, handheld because my 100 to 300 and my G85 let me shoot down to about an eighth of a second, maybe even a quarter of a second without any camera shake. So I'm just going to be doing mine handheld. Um, but yeah, if you're using a tripod, just be cognizant of the effects of the sun. And if you're just going to be observing the eclipse with your eyes, guys, or through binoculars, I mean, for God's sakes, don't stare at the sun. It's pretty obvious, but I mean, you've got to be looking through something very dark if you actually want to see the eclipse. Otherwise, you're just going to be blinding yourself. So don't do that. All right, guys. Well, I hope this video was helpful. This is kind of just a jumping off point in terms of what to expect for exposure. Um, again, look at this table. You can find it online. Just search solar eclipse exposure table. You can kind of find what to expect for your particular camera. Uh, shoot raw, bracket your shots. Use the longest lens you have for totality. If you're getting partial phases, use filters. And if you have a second camera that does video like I do, guys, not a bad idea to have that going while you're doing your still shots. All right, guys, thanks for watching and good luck.